I'm here with world-renowned primatologist, conservationist, and the world's leading expert in chimpanzees, Dr. Jane Goodall. Thank you for joining me, Jane. Thank you. Great. So I just wanted to start out. Uh, you've been you've been a conservationist and a uh, someone passionate about uh, chimps for for over 50 years. What what has fueled your your passion? Well, it started off when I was 10 years old, planning to go to Africa, live with animals, and write books about them. It ended up with my saving up money, getting to Africa, meeting the paleontologist Louis Leakey, who suggested chimpanzees. I wouldn't have even thought about them. <laughs> And I was really happy out in the forest with the chimps, learning about them. And then in 1986, we had a conference showing that by then there were about seven different field sites and everywhere chimpanzee numbers were dropping, forests were disappearing. And we, we uh, you know, it was shocking to all of us. And when I left that conference, I realized I needed to try and do something. I didn't quite know what to do, but something to help the chimps. And so that began this crazy traveling around the world, learning more and more about what we humans have done to harm the planet, uh, you know, the destruction of the forest and the ocean pollution and, and the burning of fossil fuels and climate change and you name it, we're really harming the future for our children. And because I care very passionately, I've got grandchildren, uh, I have to keep on sharing a message, trying to raise awareness, and helping people understand that each single day you may feel helpless in, in the face of all the problems, but if everybody makes the right ethical choices and you know, thinks about the consequences of what they buy, eat, wear, collectively, that's going to make a huge difference. Of course. Uh, over the years, spending so much time uh, working with chimpanzees and, and researching them, what has that taught you about, about humans? Is there any parallels there? There's many parallels. We, For one thing, we now know we share 98.2 or even 98.6% of the DNA and similarities in immune system, composition of blood, anatomy of brain, so, so, so close. And then behavior, kissing, embracing, holding hands, patting one another, holding out the palm of the hand outstretched, begging for food, swaggering, competing for dominance, long bonds between mothers and offspring, tool using, the fact that in different parts of Africa there are different objects used for different reasons, and we can describe these as different cultures. Yeah. So basically putting all this together makes us realize that we're not separated from the rest of the animal kingdom, as once was thought. We're part of it. How, how is developing a bond or, or a friendship with a chimpanzee different or, or similar from, from developing one with a human? Well, it's completely different. Out in, out in the wild, uh, it's, it's not, you know, they, they were never part of my family. Mm. They were a community of beings whom I respected. And a few of them, I, I would say, I loved them, like David Greybeard and, and Flo. But they were a different community. It was like looking through a window and being privileged to observe what they're doing. So that's very, very different from right. developing a bond with a human or a dog, for that matter. Mm. You're on a you're on a, a, a international speaking tour now, uh, speaking in Cologne on Saturday night. Uh, what are you hoping the audience uh, takes away from your from your tour? I hope they take away the fact that it's possible for each and every one of us to make a difference every single day, and that we owe it to the future to do the best we can. Over your 50 plus years of, of working in this field, how have you seen uh, public perception change of, of both conservation and, and the primate world? It's changed a lot. People have much more understanding. The problem is that they don't take action to create new attitudes. I mean, we're using up the natural resources of the planet faster than they can replenish themselves. So if we don't do something about it, if we don't do something about our greedy materialistic lifestyle um, and the waste that we create and learn to recycle and reuse and have a, 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 a cyclical uh, way of living. And if we don't do something to alleviate poverty, where people cut down the trees because they've got to desperately try and grow some food. So there's a, a lot of attitude to be changed. Mm -hmm. 
Well, Dr. Goodall, I just want to thank you for taking the time to, uh, to speak with us, and, and welcome to the Okanagan. Um, I've actually read that you're a fan of the alcohol Aquavit, and it just turns out that uh, here, here in town we have a distillery, Okanagan Spirits, that, uh, that makes an a, a award-winning Aquavit. So I just wanted to, for something to remember the Okanagan with, I just wanted to, to give you a bottle of, uh, <laughs> of Okanagan you. Spirits Aquavit. Fantastic. Very nice. Thank you. Uh, for Castanet News, this is Nick Johansson with Dr. Jane Goodall.